you have to understand also that workouts are stressors on our body. And if we're not adding something in that helps to reduce that that stress and tension on our body, then we're kind of not doing ourselves a, a service, right? Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're talking about why would I need to add mobility, especially if I'm already an active person? Like what does it really do in my life? So let's break it down. Before we go into, is mobility even effective? Is it necessary? Is it something that we should be focusing on at all? We'll talk about it, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, because we talk about a lot of pains and diagnoses, and we bring up other common questions like this that we like to dive through. And not only do we have episodes on YouTube like this, but we also have just educational videos talking about different diagnoses and exercises that you can do to really help either prevent pain or stop it from continuing. So don't forget to subscribe and leave us comments if you experience any of this at all as we're talking through it. Why would I add mobility in if I'm already so active? Like what's mobility gonna do to help me out? So I think that's really something that would be important. Why doing mobility can really be like maybe one of the missing links of what you actually should have in your routine. We all have pretty busy lives. So thinking of adding like an hour of mobility before you work out or 30 minutes even, you know, like all of that sounds really daunting mm -hmm. and time consuming. And just that's gonna be the last thing that I think about to add in. I think we need to, for First to find, okay, well, what is mobility? What makes it important? Why do we talk about it on this podcast? Yeah. And I mean, mobility is more of this generic phrase, I think. And if we want to break it down even more, like you have passive range of motion and active range of motion mm -hmm. that, you know, in my opinion, are both kind of encompassed by this mobility umbrella. And passive range is more so like the static stretching that you might imagine somebody doing, but but not even. It's just that, that range of motion of the joint where we're not actually putting load into it versus active motion mobility is then so for imagining a hamstring stretch and you're just trying to lean forward and touch your toes and that would be more of a passive range of motion actively if you're laying on your back and you try to raise your leg while it's straight at the knee and see how far you can get that would be more of your active hamstring mobility mm -hmm. and then if we go more into the functional realm where we're not talking specific active or passive range of motion then that's like okay now what does my hamstring length or function look like when i'm trying to do a loaded deadlift mm -hmm. or a loaded single leg deadlift mm -hmm. like all of those in my opinion are encompassed in this mobility umbrella i am not a person who's like never stretch i mean i came from a gymnastics background where i yeah we stretched and we were super strong and super powerful and i did a lot of cool things with my body because of the range of motion that i had available within my body so i am not a, like this is not the podcast to come to and say like only strength train and, and active mobility yes and and yes, and there's a time and place for everything. And so I think understanding when those are important will help to like identify, okay, well, what would be most important then to add into my life? When I think of passive mobility and a time when it might be necessary is a time when you are constantly in tension, you are having a lot of pain in your body, you are experiencing a lot of stress in your life and in, you can't even access your range of motion within your body. You can't, mm -hmm. your body is preventing you from bending over and touching your toes or rotating or moving because you have so much trapped tension and stress within your body. I think those are the times when getting your leg up a wall and doing some deep breathing and getting a passive hamstring strat is so incredibly useful for your entire body. Warm up, sir cool downs have gotten kind of a bad rap because often people will go and be like well i don't know what to do or like i'll do you know touch my toes pull my heel to my butt yeah, do a few jumping jacks <laughs> like swing my leg on <laughs> you know, get on the wall and swing my legs around a little bit. Like really your warm up should be kind of a watered down or a slightly lighter version of what you're going to be going into for your workout. So if you're going to do something that's really hip 
or lower extremity intensive than maybe doing some active range of motion at your hip. Maybe standing up and do hip cars, which is a controlled articular range of motion all around the hip. That's really going to get all those hip muscles activating. You're going to start getting some blood pumping in your system. It's mentally tasking because you need to like connect your brain to what all those hip muscles are doing and it's mm -hmm. going to prime the muscles for that workout. Mm -hmm. We're talking about just mobility training, being able to add mobility into your life. It's either to add some down regulation where you might have a lot of stress and tension. You have to understand also that workouts are stressors on our body and if we're not adding something in that helps to reduce that that stress and tension on our body then we're kind of not doing ourselves a, a service right so we need to also be adding in moments of getting that down regulation so passive stretching is so incredibly important for that and then active mobility in terms of okay now how do I use what range is available within my body so that I'm prepared for the movement I'm gonna do. If I wanna be able to get my knee past my toes more and get more better ankle mobility so that I can squat deeper so that my knees don't take on so much tension so that my low back doesn't take on so much tension, well then I'm probably gonna wanna spend some time in a deep squat getting into that ankle range of motion. And that could be you're holding it passively and then you're kind of like actively down in that squat, moving side to side and getting those toes kind of lifted up. So we're activating the front of that shin as mm -hmm. well into that ankle range of motion. Like all of those are gonna be super crucial in the movement that we're going to do. Again, Schult, like there's so many areas of the body where if we prime that joint, that musculature, get blood flow to that area, get proprioception and awareness from our brain to that muscle, we're going to feel so much better in the workout that you're going to do. The challenge is a lot of people don't know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I want to activate and prime these muscles to get ready for this workout, like what do I do? I just right. don't have that type of background. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's where following a plan is honestly like the most effective thing that you can do. And it's honestly held me accountable to my mobility practice. Like by the time this comes out, I'm at the very end of my pregnancy now. Well, right now when we're talking, I'm now six and a half months into my pregnancy and I have been doing the full body low impact plan on Gen Health and it has mobility programmed into it. But if you already have like your workouts, you have your things, you have your place that you're going to go and you're super excited. We have a full body mobility plan already built into Gen Health that has different phases associated with it as well. So it's a 30 day plan. And then you have another phase that you can go into right after, but it's 10 to 15 minutes a day of giving you mobility mm. that you can use passive and actively to help downregulate the system and improve your joint range of motion, your sense of joint in space and the musculature that go around those joints to help prepare you for the movements that you're going to be doing in workouts. Yeah. And through 30 days of that, like I promise you, you will have a couple days that you'll hit and be like, oh my gosh, like oh, yeah. this is one of the movements that I have been missing. Then there's so many different cool variations of spinal mobility flows that will just help you mm -hmm. move or rotate or activate in within that spinal range of motion that you've never thought of before. Same mm -hmm. for different upper body and lower body mobility flows that you find in that program. And the awesome thing is, you know, to start off the year, especially since we're going to be in a month of <laughs> Craze. waiting for a baby to show up and we're going to need something to kind of bring us back to our bodies. Yeah. We're running a Gen Health Community Challenge where we're going to have tons of people going through this full body mobility plan all together at the same time throughout the month of January. And our goal is to kind of help people supplement whatever your New Year's goals are with a plan that is actually going to be sustainable and help you feel good in your body body and not overdo it and not overtrain. So if you have interest in joining us in that journey as we are going to become parents in January, <laughs> which is crazy to talk about um, and even think about, go down to the link in the show notes, which is going to be gen.health backslash mobility. And that will help you join up for this challenge that starts January 1st. So we're going to get right after it. Keep moving through the month of January and feel good and connected within our bodies. Again, it doesn't take much time and you can join just for a month if you want to just kind of try it out. If you know, like this is going to be something I'm committed to. And on Gen Health, we have so many other plans and programs as well. That's not just just about mobility. So you can always go into other things, you know, so if you committed for like, this is, I actually want to start addressing my body and my pains this year, then sign up for the year, you know, come in and join us. And we have weekly lives and we do, well, this time we'll have monthly lives because 
your girl is going to be <laughs> a, a little intense this month and in the next few months to come. But we have so much community support on on Gen Health as well, and we're continuing mm-hmm. to improve the videos. We're continuing to put new videos on, new plans, new ways to really help you within your body and the full body mobility. Again, we talk a lot, like if you've listened to other podcasts, we've talked a lot about pains and diagnoses and a lot of it comes down to what am I missing? You can focus on the symptom and what's happening, but a lot of times it's repetitive nature of one thing happening over and over again and we're neglecting adding that one thing in. And for a lot of people, that is that, that baseline mobility. Thanks for listening in on another PT Pearl all about mobility and why it might be the missing link in your routine. Comment below if anything resonated with you. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the amazing movement content that we have coming out in the future.